wiggle room in here. And you might see this when you get a person who sells their home and they can't sell it, so they buy the next one and they decide to rent this one out. That would be this person. They don't own more than three at one time. And there's no use of a realtor. That's the second bullet point in there. Once again, once we get involved, all this goes out the door. And then the third bullet point I want to emphasize, you can never advertise any discriminatory acts. Even if you potentially may think you have an exception, you can never advertise no Jewish people. That, the, the actual act of advertising is a violation. So if you've got just a little sign that says for lease and you have a double and you live in one and you're leasing the other out and someone comes up to you and there's no agent, less than four units. I don't know where my phone went to. Less than four units and it's owner occupied and they didn't advertise it. They could potentially be exempt from the fair housing rule. All right. Are we okay so far? Good. At the bottom of page 351, they talk about the housings for older people again. And remember, this is an age thing, and age is one of them that we allow to discriminate on. They get special preferential treatment from the government if they declare they're a HOPA community. And that special exemption allows them to say, sorry, you are too young to live here. So it's not a discriminatory act because that is the hope of purpose is to allow housing for over 55. All right. Can you do that with any age group? Not to my knowledge. Can you do it with any age? What about like colleges? This is getting federal yeah, like, protection. I guess you would have to go through some kind of governmental agency to get that approved. But I don't think that you could have an apartment complex and say, I'm only renting out to 20 to 25 year olds. Have you ever heard of like Lutz on Capital? Who? Is it? Lux on Capital. I have not heard of them. Okay. Well, like they're more of like uh uh, but like they're more of like a luxurious college like apartment, like uh, but right. like they're like an apartment complex mainly for like just like college kids. So like, how does that work out? Well, once again, under the Fair Housing Act. Age is not a protected class. So that I was that's why I was trying to think through what Shauna asked, because I am not a practicing attorney. All right. I would imagine that Shauna, you probably could do something similar to what Jaman is saying about having a college rental on campus or close to campus and saying we only rent to people under 25 as long as you were consistent with it and didn't actually rent to someone who was 26 by mistake because that would then put you in this trick bag because the others you told oh i won't rent to you you're 27 but you rented to this guy that's 26 I would say that it seems to me, based on what I know about the seven protected classes, age is not one of them in housing. Age is one of them in credit, but age is not one in housing. I think you could probably do that as long as you were consistent. 
all right? I do know a guy that was a landlord here in town, and one of his qualifications was you had to have a W-2 of four times the rent to qualify for the rental. And he specifically called out W-2, which would eliminate waitresses and bartenders and dancers and real estate agents that got a 1099 because his belief was you cannot garnish wages of an independent contractor or a contractor. So he wanted to only rent to employees where he could go to their job and garnish their wages if needed. And he got challenged once and actually the, the court case got dismissed before I even went to court, but he literally said, I don't rent to contractor employment people. And his stance was, your job is not a protected class. As long as I never rented to a contractor and always rented to an employee, I'm good. That's what he used to tell me. So I would, if you would use that kind of gap or that kind of uh, analytical jump, Shauna, you could potentially say I only ran out to less than 30. All right, Cameron. So how do like fraternities and like sororities work when they make those up? Because like only males are allowed in like a fraternity and like only females are only like a sorority. So like, won't that kind of like violate it, that fair housing? Since it's like sex, like. No, that would be like, because those are considered private clubs and we have clubs currently that discriminate based on sex girl scouts boy scouts up until about two years ago yeah but they're not like having their own like house or nothing like that like like when they go to rent the actual building yeah. on campus you know what i'm saying okay Does that makes sense no, because this is a subtle difference. The house is owned by a private organization and it rents to its own private organization. Okay. It does not rent outside of that private organization. So it would not fall under that exemption issue because it's not renting to outside of the private organization. Have you guys ever heard of curves for women? It's a workout facility. It's only female. Males are not allowed to join curves. Now, remember, we, we're not talking about housing in this last couple. So that's going to fall under the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which is where the Civil Rights Act came from. And that's where the 1968 one came from was 1964, which talked about civil rights in other areas like this. All right. The only thing I will tell you is two things. One, I'm not a practicing attorney. And two is somehow my assumption is there are so many fraternities and sororities in the United States that they cannot be operating illegally without someone by now jumping up and raising a fuss. All right. Um, you guys remember several years ago when the guy tried to get hired at Hooters? You guys may be too young. There was a guy that tried to go into Hooters and get hired as a waitress, and they turned him down because they said, we only hire females. And he sued under Civil Rights Act. And they came back and said, okay, you, you, you win, we'll hire you. But our dress code for waitresses is these red hot shorts and a brassiere and the t-shirt. And if you're going to come in and work, then that's what you're going to wear. And he eventually opted to not take the job. But I mean, he did sue because they told him we only hire females as waitresses. All right. So there are court cases that happen based on this. We are talking about housing right now. All right. 
Uh, Jamon, do they have those down here in IU or Purdue, that company? There is one, there is one downtown and it's called Lux on Capital. I might like to look into that just out of curiosity to see what they're doing. And do right. they only rent to students? Four of my friends went to IEPUI and like they all and like they all like lived there while they were like in school and like they were all like college kids that lived there so like i'm assuming that like they like mainly rented to like just like college kids but like but like i like don't know for a fact like yeah yeah <clears throat> i know a lot of investors that love to buy rental properties around the country near colleges because they claim they make good money my problem is, dude, they're college kids. You know how bad that's going to get tore up? You ever put four 20-year-old males in one house and see what happens? Lutz on Capital did actually get in trouble for throwing crazy parties for a couple years. So, I mean, <laughs> well, that's... A house full of teenage boys? What can go wrong? <laughs> a buddy of mine was talking he's got a friend that's female and she's got two boys funny story and the one boy came in from the garage and he had spray paint on his face and she was relaying the story to tim and she said yeah my my boys told me they were having a uh spray can fight and he got sprayed in the eye and tim told her he said that's a lie that's wrong and she said what he said yeah that's wrong Go back and ask him again. So she went back. He said, oh, OK. <clears throat> we actually threw the can on the floor and it blew up and sprayed my eye. And Tim told her again, no, that's lie. Go back and check it again. So as it turns out, after the mother, the female, who's typically the softer, innocent, more person, grilled their boys to find out, oh, we shot the can with dad's 38 and it blew up and sprayed us all in the face. And Tim goes, that's the story. That's what really happened. <laughs> All right. But the uh, Susan kept saying, oh, they were spray can fight. And Tim's like, no, no, they weren't. That's a lie. <laughs> All right. So continuing on, there's on the next page, there's a section called the ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act. All right. The Americans with Disabilities Act is not a housing act all right it's not it does not involve the housing per se it is an employment or a consumer act which we get drug into because we have offices where the consumer comes into okay so you still have to abide by the ada act and the ada has eight titles we are only worried about two of them in this course all right so title one of the americans with disability act says an employer must make reasonable consideration to accommodate his employees with disabilities all right the key word here is reasonable accommodations it is not absolute accommodations. Once again, there is this whole economic burden escape clause that employee employers can use. So as a brokerage office, I may have employees. I would be required to make sure that I have maybe lowered desk work areas, grab bars on the in the bathroom, TTY phones for the hearing impaired, but it's reasonable accommodations. If I find out it's gonna cost, and I'm gonna be something stupid here just to prove a point, $1.8 million to convert my office to grab bars in the bathroom, I literally could say, I can't afford that, and that cost would drive my company in the ground. So it's not an absolute. It's a reasonable accommodation for your uh, dis your employees with disability. So it's an employment rule. That's Title One. 
title three